today we're going to talk about descriptive statistics. So I'm going to talk about what it is, why it's important, and what it includes. Uh, so first, what is it? It's a way to describe your data, hence the name descriptive statistics. And it gives you an idea of what your data is actually telling you, rather than just looking at a bunch of numbers and trying to figure it out. And it consists of two general categories, the measures of central tendency and the measures of spread. And why is it important to use descriptive statistics? Well, it makes your data easier to understand, as I said before, and it also summarizes your data into a few important key numbers rather than just using all of them. It also allows you to see the patterns in your data. Uh, so first, let's start with the measures of central tendency, which include the mean, the median, and the mode. So the mean is just the average, the median is the exact middle of your data, and the mode is your most common da data value. So I'll talk about these more in detail in a second. So first, let's start with the mean. So the mean just represents the average of all your data values. And to find the mean, you just take up all your data values, add them together, and divide by the number of data values that are in your data set. So in this example, we have all the numbers added together, and there are eight data values. So you divide by eight, and you get 72 divided by eight is nine. So the mean of this data set is nine. So typically, the mean is actually the best uh, measure of central tendency, as it represents they mean and using all of your data points. Next we have the median, which is the exact middle of your data set. To find the median, you just put all of your data points into order, either in descending order or ascending order, and you find the middle point if it's an uh, odd number of data values, and that the median would be the middle value itself, and if you have an even number of data values, it would just be the average of the two center points. So in our example, the Average of the two middle points, which are 4 and 5, is 4.5. So 4.5 is your median of the data set. And the median is sometimes used in other cases when the mean is not actually the best measure of central tendency, which I'll talk about in a minute. Then we also have the mode, which is your most common value in your data set. You can uh, um, have a possibility of one mode, no mode, or more than one mode. So in the first example, we have no mode, as all of the numbers are only represented once. So there's none that are represented more than any other number. In the second example, you can see that the three, number three is your mode since it's represented three times in your data set, which is more than any other number. You can also see that seven is also represented twice, but it is less than the number three, so it's not a mode. Unless it was, if it was represented seven, the seven was represented three times, it would also be considered your mode. So you'd end up having two modes, one of three and one of seven. So then how are these related? Well, if you have a normal distribution, all of your data, your measures of central tendency will be all the same in the center of your data. So your mean, median, your mode will all be the center as all of your data points are centered in the middle with just a few on the sides. But sometimes your data is not always normal and you can have a negatively skewed or a positively skewed data set. In a negatively skewed data set, most of your data points are um, piled onto the positive side of the distribution and there's only a few that are on the negative side which would make your mean go down lower than it actually should be, since it would be affected by these lower numbers on the side. So the median would be a better me measure of central tendency. And you also have the opposite when your data set is positively skewed, as you look at only a few that are on the positive side and most are on the negative. Your median, would, again, would be the best measure of central tendency, as it would be the actual middle and would be affected by these higher data values. So next I'm going to give it over to Paige to talk about measures of spread. So first up, the three measures of spread that we were talking about today are the variance, standard deviation, and range. And at the bottom, you can see the equations for the sample variance and the sample standard deviation. So first off, explaining, talking about the variance. The variance is the average spread di difference from the mean. And you square the differences in the equation because you want to lose, because you don't want to lose the negatives. And towards the bottom, right is the equation for the standard deviation. So you take the sum of each sample in each sample and you subtract that from the mean and you square that and you divide all of those sum together by by one minus or your total number in your sample minus one. And this is harder to interpret, so we'll go on to the standard deviation. And the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance, and it's the average deviation from the overall mean. So you can see in that picture there, our mean of each of those 
different data sets represented by those different colored lines is zero. And you can see how far spread out the data is using the standard deviation. So the red data set, the red line that represents that data set has a smaller spread than the green, which also has a smaller spread than the blue one, which has the largest standard deviation in that picture. So the third spread of measure that we'll talk about is the range. And the range is the difference between your largest observed value and your smallest observed value. So if you had in your data set the largest value was a 9 and your smallest value was a 3, then you take 9 minus 3 and you get 6. And this shows the interval that your data spans. So if we had a data set that went from 3 to 9, our data is spanned by the interval of 6. And you use this with to you figure out the range with the endpoints of your data. And the next step, once you from descriptive statistics, you only have that sample data set that you use to find out your descriptive data sets. So the next step up from this would be using inferential statistics to find to generalize the findings from an entire population. And you'd use the relationships in your data set to figure out the general form the for the population. And that's it.